Warning, you are about to enter the BGP suite. No thongs, no boy shorts, no thigh highs, no commandos are permissible. BGP, big girl panties only. So pull up to woman up. And no, please don't leave with your panties in a bunch. It's a beautiful day in Southern California. We are in the heart of Lamert Park. The current temperature is 70 degrees and we plan on making it even hotter. Welcome everyone to BGP, AKA Big Girl Panties. And today we're gonna to open up the discussion by asking you a question. So ladies, it's time to pull out and put on those big girl panties. Because BGP wants to know, who taught you how to date? Who taught you how to date is a very interesting question because I've been here for a minute. Okay, I've been here for an hour. Okay, I've been here for a few decades and <laughs> nobody has ever asked me that question. Ladies, has anyone ever asked you that question? No. No one's never asked me that question. We just kind of like figure it out. As we go. As we go. So yeah. would it be right to say that if we took a poll right now, most people would give us the wrong answers before they gave us a right answer? Yes. And do we cool. even know what the right answer is supposed to be? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here's a little fun fact. Around the 1900s, society didn't know how to take seeing a man out in public whining and dining or gifting a woman. And sometimes a woman could actually get a felony. So to start this off, we need the definition of to date. Does anybody know the definition of to date? Well, I know what I've heard, like courting and getting to know that person, um, which doesn't happen very often these days. But yeah, when you think, when you hear it from, when I think about how my mother used to share with me, there's this courting process that really never happens, but I think that has something to do with dating. I would say it's, uh, it's usually when two people are trying to get to know each other and they figure out what they have in common and don't have in common, their likes, dislikes, and see if they're compatible amongst each other. Um, I look at courting different. Courting is more when you're like looking for marriage. Mm -hmm. Dating is when you're more when you're trying to see if you guys are even fit to get to the next stage of getting to know each other. Well, clearly that's probably why it didn't work for me. I did it backwards. <laughs> I did it backwards. <laughs> yeah, there's two sides of that coin. There's dating, which is something that is done in private, and courting on the other side, something that probably Gen X or the millennials don't know about, mm -hmm. yes. is something that involves family. So we're going to concentrate on, on dating right now, but you're absolutely correct. Dating is two people in private trying to see if mm -hmm. they are compatible enough for intimacy. So when you think of the word intimate, mm -hmm. what do you think the first thing that people's mind go to? Sex. Uh, you, you got a whisper? I either? mean, sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. When you think of intimacy, it you think of sex, but it's not just sex. Absolutely. So right. sex should be the last thing on the table. Absolutely. Becoming intimate with someone, like Nisha said, is trying to see if my background, my culture, my religion, my morals mm -hmm. and values and principles gel well with you. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that two people are trying to open up mm -hmm. to see if they are compatible. So right. I want to know your hopes, your dreams, your desires, your frustrations, where you come from in the, in, in the family. Are you an only child? Are you the firstborn? Mm -hmm. Where you were raised? How you get along with your parents? Do you come from a one-parent household or a two-parent household? All those things are very important when you're trying to see if you are suitable to mm. even want to take your clothes off. <laughs> yep. okay. Exactly. Because once you take your clothes off, the you talking can't go is kind of no, out yeah. the window. Exactly. <laughs> yep. you can't right, go back. right, right, right. True, true. So, is texting, sexting, 
a part of intimacy. It could be looked at as intimacy. It gets it can become very intimate, although I don't think we've gotten away with with technology being the way it is. We've gotten away from that face to face conversation, which I think is so important in dating. I need to see what your expression is when I ask you this question, because you could say whatever. You know what I mean? So I think it's important to be face to face. But I don't think, um, yeah, a lot of stuff happens via text now. I don't think it's a form of intimacy. I think it's just kind of like a more of a like just you can say whatever you want via texting. You can say the right answers via text. But if you get if you talk to someone over the phone or face to face, you can catch little things that you may not catch in a text. Mm -hmm. You know, usually if you ask a question, you can kind of get an answer more clearly when you're face to face. Like, I love Mexican food. Do you like Mexican food? That person, if they if they say, yeah, but they really don't mean it, you can catch that. Whereas a text message, they could just say, oh, yes, I like Mexican food, too. I like everything that you like, too. So it's not really intimate. And you can send group text. You can, see, you can send mass text to the same, you know, to different women with the same sure. messages. So it's not really intimate to have, like, a texting conversation. To me, that's not a way of getting to know somebody. But if you pick up the phone and we have that voice-to-voice -voice conversation – then that to me is more intimate mm, to me. Absolutely. I think that texting and sexting is a form of technical communication. However, like Nisha said, I need to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. I need to hear how you sound when you're being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. I need to hear how you sound when you're being humorous. Yep. And I think so much gets lost in texting because you can misconstrue one sentence and now everybody's, you know, pissed off at one another. And I'm too old to be texting. After, hi, how you doing? I need to hear your voice. Yeah. Right. I need to hear that tone. And yes, talking on the phone is a little more intimate uh, mm -hmm. because you can't hide behind that keyboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. Um, what about online dating? Oh, meaning what? Is it an intimate? Is it, is it intimate? Could it be intimate? <sighs> For me, no. For some people, it works. I mean, there's a lot of stories where people say they met online and, and got married. For me, I, I have to get to know you more. I, I prefer meeting in person. And again, having that face-to-face -face contact. Online dating, I mean, I know that's the new rave, but mm -hmm. I, it's 50-50 it's for me. It's kind of iffy. Yes. Yeah. Because like you said, again, yeah. somebody can be whoever they want to yes. be. Mm -hmm. And you might never meet this person. And they're kind of got you dangling with a couple of highs. Right. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hey, beautiful. Hey, true. Exactly. <laughs> hey, beautiful. Hey, hey, gorgeous. Queen. Hey, and queen. Somebody <laughs> So how long, how old do you think uh, once a young lady starts smelling herself and she gets to finding out that boys think she's cute and she has pretty hair and she got a nice shape, how old do you think a young lady should be before she goes out on her first date? Because I know both of you have daughters. Yes. So I think it's a maturity level. It just depends on where they are. Um, and I think it's very important to, to talk to them at a young age and sharing with them some of the things that are out there because it's a different time from when we were growing up. Um, so I think, uh, I would think generally maybe about 13, 14, you can start having, not dating, not dating. No, no, no. But I'm just talking about, I'm talking about having, those, having those really deep talks about okay. what okay. to expect. No, not dating. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. So. Um, I tell my daughter she can date when she's 30, but <laughs> <laughs> because the way this world is set up, um, I'm not even ready. Um, but no, I, I think that I would say maybe 15, like 15 for her, she'll be in 10th grade. So by then, you know, of course we already have discussions about what's out there at her age level. I don't, throw everything down her throat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as she gets closer to 15, I told her that's when I, I would be okay with her have going on a chaperoned date mm -hmm. with someone. Right. Um, so 15 yeah. for me. Okay. I would say 16 is, is good because you're almost graduating from high school. You've been around the male, female dynamic 
But I also think that maturity doesn't really have nothing to do with it because we have old people that are immature mm-hmm. as far as dating is concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, a very intelligent black man once said, he used a word that I had heard before, but not in the content that he used it. And this was several years ago when he said, black people... Uh, when they get married, they don't have a purpose for their marriages. So if they don't have a purpose for their marriage, they will not have a pur- purpose for their children. Mm. So I believe that you should um, sit your child down and ask them why they want to go on a date. Exactly. That's a good question. What does a date consist of? Mm-hmm. 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 What is their intentions yeah. on going out on a date? And once you hear their answer, our job as parents is to correct them. Like right. Nisha said, she would allow her daughter to go out on a chaperone date. That's more on the courting side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because dating is really something that you're 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 going at your own risk. Mm-hmm. It's kind of private. You're not trying to involve anybody. You're secretly trying to find out what's what's mm-hmm. this person all mm-hmm. about. And it, it could be very risky. So for children, I I would say sixteen. That's sweet sixteen kind mm-hmm. of thing. And mm-hmm. um they can talk on the phone. How old would they have to be to talk on the phone to a young man? Fourteen. Mm. I, I, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, they gotta talk before 13, they 14, date, right? True, right, true. right. <laughs> but then I think I need to be a little bit privy to that conversation. Oh, Not, you know, because boys are at a, and girls too. When those hormones get to going. It can be some stuff that's being said that may be inappropriate, and, and we want to make sure. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And not to be unfair, but they say little girls is a little faster than little boys. So sometimes Mm -hmm. you got to watch those little girls. You know, um, my father, I got to go on my first date at 16. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But I got to talk to little boys on the phone. So, you know, once you uh, are allowed to talk on the phone. And, you know, we had to go to bed at 830. Right. So Mm -hmm. we had to talk before 8 o'clock. So once you're allowed to have boys call your house, mm-hmm. you know, you pass your phone number out to everybody, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> call me, call me, call me. So now you're right. trying to wait on the phone call and nobody never calls. So when you get back to school, you're like, hey, I thought you were going to call me. Mm-hmm. And several boys was like, I did. And I'm like, no, you didn't. Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah. And I'm like, what happened? And they said, your dad hung up on me. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, in our generation, I'm 60, you were taught to stay in a, in a child's place, exactly. mm-hmm. speak only when you're spoken to, mm-hmm. respect your elders, and don't get in grown folks' business. Right. So, of course, I couldn't go to my dad and be like, what's up, pops? Uh, people been calling here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. you're not letting them talk to me, you know. So I guess at some point in time, my father got sick of it. Mm-hmm. So, he, you know, my nickname was Boomy. So he's like, Boomy, come here. And, you know, us growing up, we, we had to say, yes, sir, on the way. We couldn't say, huh? Right, what? right. Exactly. <laughs> we had to be like, yes, sir, and on the way. So he was like, um, and he called all little boys Little Willie. So he was like, look here. If Little Willie going to call this phone, he going to have to have some phone etiquette. So he was like, whose phone is this? Your sir. <laughs> mm. Who pays the bill? You do. Mm-hmm. He said, so Lil Willie is going to have to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Absolutely. Mr. Villachey. Mm-hmm. How are you? May I speak to Mona? So, you know, as a child, you're like, why they got to talk to you? They ain't calling for him. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're saying it under your breath. But, right. Right. you know, so finally I got to school and I told the little boys, you know, what they had to do. And then I started having phone mm-hmm. calls. So, like you said, monitoring is very important because right now we don't have the phones where the parents can pick up the other line and hold on <laughs> exactly. yeah, and play like they didn't hang up and be listening. Right, right. So, exactly. Yeah, okay. We don't know what's going on on the other end. Right, right. Yes. Yeah, because yes. I like my daughter's had a phone since she was 10. Um, and initially on her phone, it was just for, you know, she just had my number, her grandparents and, you know, family immediate right. family um but now she has friends from school and a lot of times it's not even about them just getting on the phone to have conversations they chat like they have school mm-hmm. chat rooms that they talk to each other on and it, it's her classmates and it's boys and girls but you know and I can monitor and see right. what they're talking about but Thank goodness my daughter is still on the nerdy side. So, <laughs> yeah, we like so, that. <laughs> so I, I'm not worried until I'm, I'm not concerned more or less until she hits high school and see that other aspect of the world where some parents aren't really 
you know, involved in their, their kid's life and let and them do whatever. Pressure, that yeah. peer yes, pressure. Yes. But uh, like as far as right now, like she has a cell phone, but she she don't really use it. She's more on her computer. Um, because like I said, they chat. Like mm-hmm. she has her cheerleading team, they have their own little chat room. She has her school, her classrooms where the classmates, they have their chat rooms because, you know, of course, because of the pandemic, everyone's at home. So I don't even like have to monitor her phone right now. That was going to be my next question. Is yeah. it appropriate to go through the phone every once in a while? with Because, you know, in my, my day, we didn't have the, I mean, we had cell phones, our, our pagers, but it wasn't as popular as it is today. So right. do you go through it? I don't have to right now because she mm-hmm. don't have nobody really. Right, right. That she talked to on the phone except her, her god sister and, you know, like immediate family and friends. But the chat room is who I, I look at. I'll yeah. look at and be like, who are you talking to today? And they'd be like, hi, Miss Williams. Yes, yes. You know, <laughs> you know, just to see. But I don't, um, I don't have to go through her phone yet. I think that's probably, that may be a concern when she hits high school for me. Mm-hmm. Right now, she, she okay. <laughs> I think the question is appropriate because as parents, absolutely, we yeah, go through yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's how you see mm-hmm. those kids building bombs in their house. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, right. we didn't come from the households where we kept our doors closed and we had privacy. Ain't no privacy mm-hmm. up in here. So, mm-hmm. yes, I can go through your phone, through your drawers, through your drawers, anything I feel like because I am the mm-hmm. adult here. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So we all came from two-parent households. Yes. Um I know that your parents, you know, were still together to the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother and father got divorced when I was 16, but I still was allowed to, you know, share that dynamic of a two-parent household. So they say that children that come from two-parent households fare better than children that come from one-parent mm-hmm. households. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my question for you <laughs> ladies is there comes a point in time when we have official boyfriends. Mm-hmm. We've all had the unofficial boyfriends that right. our parents know nothing about. Mm-hmm. Right. So my question would be, how did you introduce your first boyfriend to your parents? What was the procedure that you had to go through? <laughs> Look at Adrian rolling her eyes. <laughs> what was the procedure that you had to go through to get to go out on your first date? Uh, For me, my first official boyfriend was when I was a senior. Before that, my other boyfriends that I had, they didn't know about. So when that first boyfriend came to your house, what happened? Um, <laughs> he had to meet my dad and my mom because uh, he, uh, we wanted to go out on a date. Mm-hmm. And so my dad was like, in order for you to go out on a date, I need to meet this man. I need to see who he is. You can't just go out there with anybody. And I was like, okay. And so I told him, and sure enough, he came on his little skateboard <laughs> <laughs> to the porch. Right. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Williams. Uh, I was just uh, wondering if I could take your daughter out. And he was like, what's your name? How old are you? Because you look older than you are. How old are you? You know, ask, you know, doing the little interrogation or whatnot. And then he was like, okay, well, she has a curfew. She needs to be back home at that time by 10. Um. And so he did. But, yeah, I was pretty much a junior in high school when I fi- officially introduced him to somebody. Yeah. yeah I think, Adrian? I think I was in 10th grade, 15 or so. And everybody in the neighborhood knew my father, so everybody was a bit intimidated by him because he's this big guy and that everybody knew. Um, so he put the fear in them. <laughs> they were a nervous wreck. And we got to go meet your daddy. Yes, we got to go meet my daddy. My daddy ain't going to let me go nowhere unless he meets you. So he would put that fear in them. And, um, yeah, I would be embarrassed. I'm like, God, he's going to ask all these questions. So what you plan on doing, what y'all doing, you know, and it was embarrassing, but now I understand why that was so important. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely important. Especially cause I ended up being a teen mom. Okay. Mm. So yeah, that it, it was definitely important to ask those questions. What, what y'all doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think the first time that I was allowed to um, have boys come to the house, my father already knew that this young man was coming over and my father liked um, cowboy movies and Star Trek. So me and him were, you know, I'm a dad girl. So we were always in there watching some kind of movie in the den. And the horn her um, honked. So you can hear beep, 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 you know. So I went to raise up and my daddy was like, whoa, hey, where are you going? Right. So I'm like, oh, that's my friend outside. He was like, so uh, N-I-G-G-A could just honk. Uh, right, right. And you going to go outside? So... 
in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't seem like nothing was wrong yeah. with it. But right. because he posed that question, I knew not to say anything. So right. he was like, sit down. And he used to always call you big dummy. Mm. Sit down, big dummy. I'll be right back. So he went outside. And, you know, when your parents go outside, it seems like forever, right? Mm. He went outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. He comes back in. He just sits back down. And he's, you know, finishing watching this program. So now I'm looking there, sitting there like a big dummy. Because <laughs> I don't know if to move, if not to move. And so he goes, go answer. Uh, no, then the doorbell rings. Mm. Wow. So now I'm like, oh, my God. And he goes, answer the door, you big dummy, right? <laughs> so I'm walking to the door like, I ain't going to be too many more of these big dummies, <laughs> okay, right? right? And I got to go outside. But the first time I was asked on a date, I was 16, and with my little cute little boyfriend. And he wanted to go to the movies in two weeks with his older sister and her boyfriend. Mm. So he asked me to go out, and I'm like, yeah. And he's like, okay, ask your parents. So, you know, when you're asking your parents, you try to go to the person that's going to tell you yep. yes, oh, right? Yeah. Yes, definitely. So I go to my mom. I'm like, hey, mom, this little boy I know named William, <laughs> he wants to take me to movies in two weeks. Can I go? And she was like, oh, no. He's going to have to ask your dad. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, he's going to have to ask your dad. And I'm like, why does he have to ask my dad? Why can't you just answer it? And mm-hmm. she was like, no, it doesn't go like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, in my mind, I'm thinking she's a punk, right? Yeah, yeah. Just the but I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> right, right, right. So, I go back to school. My little boy's excited. My little boyfriend is excited. And he's like, did you ask your parents? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to ask them, right? So, Monday came. And I still hadn't asked my parents mm. because I was scared to death mm. to ask my dad. So, he was like, Mona, you have to ask your parents. So, I was like, okay. So, I got home, and you know when you want something from your parents, you be on your P's and Q's. Mm-hmm. You know, you um, make sure your homework is done, your chores are done, get them some water, get them some snacks, kind of, you know, reel mm-hmm. in. So I'm like, Dad. Now, my dad had a strange personality. So as soon as you said his name, he was like, nope. Oh. So that would deter you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you have to be a rebel. So I'm going to be a rebel today. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go out on this day. So I'm like, Dad, I got a little friend. His name is blah, blah, blah. And he wants to take me to the movies on Saturday. He wants to know what time he can call you and ask you. He said, call me. I'm like, yeah. He said, oh, no. He has to come over here. So, in my mind, I'm thinking, who do you think he is? The president? <laughs> <laughs> so... I'm like, come over. And he's like, yeah. So the next day I get to school and I'm hiding from a boyfriend because we were like this, you know, because I was embarrassed. So he finally caught up to me. He's like, Mona, where have you been? And I lied and said I had to go to the library and do some homework or something. (laughs) You know, and he said, did you ask your parents? And I just busted out crying. Oh. And so I'm like, oh, my goodness. And he's like, what's wrong? And he's trying to wipe my tears away. And I'm like, you're going to have to ask my dad. (laughs) (laughs) So he's like, is that it? And he was just so silly. And he wiped my tears. He was a sweet little boy. I let him get away. But anyway. (laughs) Anyway, he said, ask him what time do I have to call? So I get home. I do my chores. I do my homework. And I'm like, Dad, he wants to know what time. Can he call? He was like, call? No, he's going to have to come over. So I'm like, really? Right? In my mind. Right, right, right. Exactly. You don't say really in their face. So I was like, this man, who does he think he is? A CIA or something, right? <laughs> so now I got to go back to school. And my boyfriend is like, well, what time does he want me to um, ca- um call? And I was like, uh, <laughs> you got to come over and meet him. And he was right. like, no problem, right? Aww. And he said he had to come over at 5 o'clock sharp, right? Mm. And I'm like, 5 o'clock sharp. So it's Wednesday. We're watching TV again. The doorbell rings, but it's about 4.45, so I'm like, oh, my God, is that him? So, of course, get the door, big dummy. Right? Mm-hmm. So I go to the door, and I have to cover my mouth because my boyfriend is standing there with some slacks on, a button-down oh, shirt, oh, in a tie. Up. He real serious. He serious he's about serious. serious. You know, I'm young and naive and ignorant, so <laughs> I got my mouth over my head over my mouth. So he was like, you're so silly, right? I was like, what do you got on, right? You look like you're going to church. Wow. He was like, shut up, Mona, let me in, right? So we come in, and my father is sitting down, and he walks straight up to my dad, and he reaches his hand up. Nice. And he said, hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. Um, nice to meet you. And my father looked at him, 
from his feet on up to his head. And my father got up and my father shook shook his hand and he sat back down. So now we're standing there like two dummies. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, you guys can have a seat. Well, we were so nervous. We sat right on top of each other. So he's like, whoa, oh. break that up, break that up a little bit, right? So my father said, you know, introduce yourself. He introduced himself. So what do you guys got going on here? So, you know, he said he would like to take us out. My father was like, who's going? Who's driving? He told him that. He was like, um, can I meet your parents? Mm -hmm. So he's like, yeah, what time you want to call him? He said, oh, no, I'm not calling. I want to meet them. Oh, wow. So I'm like, this dude is incredible, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to keep my poker face because I got in trouble for my facial expressions. Mm -hmm. If I didn't say anything, you knew if I was mad or happy or right, you right, know, right. whatever. So I'm sitting there like, this dude, he's he's messing it up for me, right? <laughs> so he was like, sure, you can meet him. So my father was like, so what time are you guys going to this movie? So he told him about 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. We plan on having dinner. It was a doubleheader. And he would bring me back at 10 o'clock. And he said, with your permission. Oh. So I was like, hey. Okay. And how old was he again? He's 16. Wow. Okay. So okay. my father sure. kind of, I kind of looked at my dad and he kind of had a little smirk in his eye. So my father said, okay, uh, one last question. Do I have to pay for this? Mm. And he was like, no, sir, I'm going to pay for her dinner. Nice. I'm going to pay for her nice. way in. And then my father said, you're going to pay for her way out, too. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when the monotony you know, broke and yeah. everybody started laughing. And he said, yes. Yeah. So now he says, Boomer, you can go to your room. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm like, Oh, here come the real I thought stuff. everything was going yeah. good, right? Yeah. So you know, um, we had a single parent, a uh, single uh, family house. So it was my mother's room, my sister's room, my brother's room, and then my room was all the way to the front. So it was like walking the long green mile, you know. Oh and um, we yes. were taught not to be in grown folks' business. So I went in my room and I closed Dude, my door, just, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what was going on. So I'm like, either my father's gonna cuss him out or he's gonna beat him up. So I go and I get my piggy bank and I put it underneath my pillow and I shake it out to see how much money I got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I give me a little knapsack because like I'm running away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he says I can't go, I'm gonna be the last laughing stock of the school. I can't go back, so I'm Aww. running away. And right then and there, there was a knock on the door, and I opened it the door and it was my little boyfriend and he um he went like this and Aww. he went like this and he blew me a kiss oh sweet so then awesome. my father calls me boom he come here and on the way stop to the medicine cabinet give me a bottle of aspirin so i'm like oh my god he has a headache this went all bad right so i'm coming this way my mother's coming this way and she's smiling and i want to lunge at her because, <laughs> yeah. you smiling boy you didn't yeah. even do nothing right <laughs> But I knew to keep that, that poker face on because I'm trying to go to this movie, right? So I go in there, my father, and I have this bottle of aspirins, and he says, now take one out. So I take a bottle, uh, took one out. He said, now put it between your knees. Mm. So now I'm like, don't nobody have time for your little jokes, you know? <laughs> so I'm standing there with this, this aspirin in between my knees, and he's like, that's how tight I want you to keep your legs closed. Oh, wow. Do okay. you understand? Yes. Okay. And I didn't. <laughs> but but yeah. of course, but I'm yes. like, yes, sir. Right. Yeah. And here comes my mom chiming in. And we expect you to act like a lady at all times, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I don't know what acting like a lady meant. I know you're supposed to have on clean panties just in case, <laughs> you know, you got into a car accident and had to go to the hospital and cross your legs, exactly. right? Other than that, I didn't know what that meant. And I think those two incidents were lost teaching moments where they could have expounded on that because mm -hmm. they know I'm a young girl. Yeah. I didn't know what the hell was going mm -hmm. on. So my father stood up. He reached in his pocket. He gave me some money. I think he gave me like $20. A lady is always supposed to have some money always. in her pocket. Always. And, you know, back then we didn't have cell phones. So then he made me go get my coin purse. Mm -hmm. So I'm about to age myself. Remember the little round yeah, coin purse? Yeah, that you and push and, and it pulled, opens up. Pulled yeah. open. <laughs> 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 <That's> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he made me go get my coin purse, and then he said, here's some some um, coins to put in your purse because just in case little Willie act up, you have a pay phone when you can call, you know. And I didn't know what that meant either. So that was uh, lost teaching moments. Yeah. But mm. I think my father was more trying to prepare me for how little boys could, you know, should treat you. Mm -hmm. And then he said one more thing, and that was this date will determine if you go, can have another one. go out on another one or not. Yeah. Or if this is your last day, do you understand? And I was like, yes, sir. And I went to my room, and I'm in there like, yes. 
<laughs> and then I came back and I grabbed him and I kissed him. Of course, he's the greatest father of all time. Because right, right, right. Right. I get to go out and I had never been out with a boy, let alone out at 10 o'clock at night. So that was mm. a big thing. So we went on the date. He brought me home about 9.45 and I got to go out on many more days after that. So parents seem to not want to talk to you about dating and hugging and when is it appropriate for a young man to hold your hand or when he tries to do that move where he puts his mm-hmm. hand over the shoulder <laughs> and when is the right time to let him lean in for the kiss. Why do you think our parents do not talk to us about those things? Because they think that if they don't teach us that, then we won't face it, I guess. And they think that we won't we won't know about it, so we, we won't experience it, is what I'm thinking. Because not to change course, because I'm going to bring it back to it, but I remember when I got my menstrual, the only lesson that my mom told me was, congratulations, you're a woman now. You can get pregnant. Mm-hmm. Don't kiss any boys because you can get pregnant. That's what she told me, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm saying that because a lot of times our parents kind of, you know, in your generation, come from the mindset that if we don't teach them about boys, if we don't teach them about sex, if we don't tell them these things, then they won't have to know. Mm-hmm. We don't have to worry about it, which is the biggest mistake is. that could be made. Like, I, I honestly think communication is key. Like, if you explain these things in a way that your child can understand or children can understand, then they can make that informed decision when they're faced with it and not go off of what their friends say or right. what the streets are saying and right. make those mistakes because they can, you know, they'll know like, well, you know what? My dad says sometimes boys do this. So when they do this, I know, er, slowly roll. You know, mm-hmm. my dad says for the guy's sake, or my mom says sometimes girls can do this, touch me here. And if they do this, er, keep your hands to yourself. No, nah, right. we can't do that. But they don't, they just feel like if I keep it like this, they don't know. I don't have to worry about it. Everything's okay, which is like the biggest mistake. I agree. To I, piggyback off of your menstrual story, because I have a menstrual story too, mm-hmm. my dad. You know <laughs> <laughs> you know when you're older and you reflect back, you, you're grateful for the lessons that they tried to right. teach you. But at that right. time, you're like, no. Right. Like, so I don't know about you guys, but when I was growing up, we had the sex education video Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and you had to bring home a permission slip Mm -hmm. yes for your parents to sign it so you could see it so I bring home the permission slip and my dad was like sit down let me tell you about the birds and the bees and I'm like oh no dude (laughs) let mama tell me and he's like your mama don't know nothing (laughs) I'm gonna tell you so I'm like oh my god I'm about to pass out because he wants to tell you about your uh your breasts are gonna get big because you're gonna have milk your hips are gonna get large and because you're gonna you're you're uh, what do you say? Preparing Your yourself for preparing. childhood. Right, and childbirth. Then yeah. he goes to the menstrual cycle. And I don't know about y'all, but we had that jockey strap little thing oh, gosh. that looks like a jock they strap. And it that. had the pad <laughs> where you clip the, the pad it's onto belt. the oh. belt. It was a sanitary belt. Oh, wow. Oh, and the Awful. thing would mess up and the Girl. pad would be all up in your booty. <laughs> Girl. Oh. So imagine your father with this big, <laughs> you napkin yeah. showing you how to put it on and I'm like please daddy no. but I feel so grateful that that he did take the time out but basically I believe that our parents don't tell us about those things because we're their babies mm-hmm. and they never see us as adults mm-hmm. yeah. and they don't want us to hug and kiss and, and do all of those things like Nisha said she told her daughter 30 you yeah. know <laughs> she gonna be all hag trying right, to 30 like you can go <laughs> now <laughs> It's based on their experience, too, because they, when you know better, of course, you do better. But our parents, at least mine, she was such in a sheltered household. They Mm -hmm. couldn't go nowhere. They could barely do anything. So she really didn't know. Now, because I'm experienced and have had a lot of experiences, the moment I had that opportunity to speak to my daughter about stuff, I was in her ear about it. This is what they do. They may say they're going to put it just ahead in. They're going to do this. All these little things that I shared with her because I didn't want her to get caught up in some of the situations right. I had got caught up in. So I think it's really what they teach you. It's already uncomfortable right. you know, to have the conversation anyway, but I think it's based on what what they went through as children too because that was that was a taboo subject oh, yeah, back absolutely. in the day. You didn't talk yes. about it. You absolutely. Didn't. You didn't talk mm-hmm. about sex. Um, yeah. But these kids have grown up so fast. Oh, yes. They're so much They're advanced. faster yes, than we they are. are. Um, 
they're over sexualized. They're you know over uh, knowing about violence, and mm -hmm. they don't get to grow up like we. Yeah, got to grow up and be young and naive right. and innocent. Everything is everything a fast is pace. yeah so thrown in their face. You yep. do them a disservice if you don't talk to them. If they ask, they're ready for the answer. Mm -hmm. Correct. Like Nisha said, you might can't tell them the adult version, but you can break it down yes. for them. They look at TV, they see sex all day yes. long. The cartoons are it, some yes, sex yes, going on, yes. You know? exactly, so, and cursing. Right? Yeah. yeah, so yeah. you have to be able to talk to your children about that. Yeah. So let's talk about the flip side of dating. Let's talk about courting. Okay. Mm. And what is courting? What do you believe courting is? Um, it's when you're, you know, again, you go from the dating stage to uh, the potential marriage stage with someone. It's if you see the potential of marriage, you're you're starting to learn, you know, their their financial background, their 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 background period to see if you can accept their flaws, they can accept your flaws, and if you guys could, you know, make something work. What do you mm -hmm. say, Adrian? Well, clearly I had a misconception of courting because I thought it kind of went in with the whole dating thing. That's probably why my three issues never worked out. But no, the, <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> but no, no, no. I'm learning still. I'm learning. No. I'm a late And that's bloomer. a beautiful thing. You know, yeah. just because we do not know how to date, yeah. that, that doesn't mean it's a good or bad thing. But we're trying to go from the bottom up so you yes. can see that. There are certain reasons why you're not doing what you're supposed to mm -hmm. do because you don't have the skills. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't have the knowledge. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You've never been taught. You've never been trained. Mm -hmm. So to even the audience to ponder, mm -hmm. hell, nobody taught me how to date. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I, I talked to, and not to cut you off, I'm That's sorry, okay. but um, I'm, I'm always talking to the youth. So I found this African-American young man and this uh, Latino young man, and I asked them who taught them how to date. And they get very defensive. Mm -hmm. So the guy was like, that's just something that comes naturally. And I'm like, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. And so the little Hispanic boy didn't say anything. And so I said, and so he said, that's just, you just evolve on doing that. And I said, no, you don't. Mm -mm. And so he goes, you can't tell me how to love somebody. I said, now you're deflecting. Mm -hmm. wow. I didn't, I asked you a question. Exactly. Well, my mama taught me how to date. I said, mm -hmm. oh. But both of them had out of wedlock like children. Mm. I said, so your mother taught you to have sex without a condom. So he looks at me. So he's mm. like, well, she said that I could or could not. Now you're lying. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and so I was like, check this out, young man. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm not trying to look down on you. I'm asking you the same questions I would ask my son. Mm. And certain things you guys don't know. You are supposed to be taught how to date where? At home. Say it louder, At, at home. <laughs> I feel like I'm making a guess. Uh, at home? <laughs> so, yeah. yes, if you come from a healthy environment, mm -hmm. your home is where you learn how to date. Mm -hmm. your, learn, your home is where you see your parents be, be a Interact. team. Yeah, yes. exactly. You see how they resolve conflict. Yes. You see what mom's duty is. You see what dad's duty is. Right. You see them kiss and then you're like, ugh. Uh -huh. you know? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> and all those little intimate things they do when they get upset and they turn on a special little slow yeah. song. And yes. You get to see that and we're not teaching our children that. That's mm -hmm. where they're actually supposed to get it for. Mm -hmm. Our house is supposed to be the stage right. where and they you know, learn these healthy mm -hmm. um, things. Mm -hmm. Not outside, like Nisha exactly. said, in the world, or television, or songs, or the cosmopolitan, and all mm -hmm. the how-to right. things. Right. That's where you're supposed to get it from. You're exactly. supposed to get it from your parents. And right? my thing is, I thought, I, that was my goal, to mimic what I saw in my parents. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the people that I got with, they had this function in their homes, mm. and I didn't know how to handle it then. So that's why you said, like when you talk about courting, that's why it's real important to find out those backgrounds of, of the people that you're dating, and to see if you are evenly yoked, as they say. Mm -hmm. and do we have the same things in common? Do we come from the same background? Because it's going to come up later on, mm -hmm. and, and, and it that may be the very thing that makes that situation fail, is because the background, the stuff that they saw, their coping skills that they learned in the home, totally different from mine. If right. they resolved it with fighting and yelling and arguing, right. and I saw it where it was a, of course that their marriage was not perfect, but I saw an occasional argument or two. That was one thing. But over here, you seeing punches thrown and things like that. Kids don't intend to pick that up, but they do. That's right. how they 
feel that they need to resolve conflict because that's what they saw at home. Or you see, um, you didn't hear any fighting, but the next day somebody yeah. got on some dark glasses or you go. somebody's back is scratched up. Exactly. I, I think that our parents do us a disservice when, again, they don't teach us anything. They think if we're in the household with them that we automatically Get pick it. up these characteristics and we don't. Mm -mm. There may be something that we don't like that our mothers do as women. Right. And we say, oh, no, I'm yep. not going to yes. do that. Yes. And vice versa. Oh, yeah. So courting. Courting is when Adrian's son likes my daughter and we're all at a party mm. and we see them kind of interacting with one another. And we think to ourselves, hmm, they might be a good match. Mm. So again, like Nisha said, we let them date chaperone, supervision. Totally good. We let them talk, have intimate talks and go to the park and walk, mm -hmm. chaperone, mm -hmm. supervision to see if they gel with one another, mm. see if they're compatible and suitable enough to become uh, married to one another because marriage was something that happened like in the uh, 1920s. Mm -hmm. and that was a concept too where families would get together to um, more for protection from the heresy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And, you know, if they were poor, right. the more they had as a unit, they could protect themselves from being poor, um, being, uh, would you say, uh, I can't think of the word. <laughs> um, attacked. Okay. You know, they had some protection because numbers, large numbers would, would, would protect them. So, yeah, um, dating is the method that really teaches you who you are. Mm-hmm. True. As a person. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. If you do it right. Mm -hmm. If you do it right. Because mm -hmm. some people, I won't just say gender specific, but some people feel like, you know, they'll date one person and they'll give their all to that one person and say, okay, I'm dating, and then things don't work out and now they're lost. When you date, you should, you're you supposed to be dating multiple people, which is why I don't understand why they're frowning on a certain celeb right now and her dating choices, but you should be dating multiple people because it gives you an idea of what you like, what you don't like, um, certain characteristics that may you know, get under your skin that mm -hmm. you can't deal with. Um, if you don't, you know, if you prefer a high value person versus a regular mm -hmm. person, you mm -hmm. know, who makes about the same salary as you, you know, like it, it, it exposes who you are. Right. But if you just limit yourself to just one person or two people, right. And just say, okay, well, this is it. You still really don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You still trying to figure it out, which is why a lot of people lose themselves for when dating just like one person yes. and be like, oh, this is it. That's the one, this, this, this. And you'd be like, well, what do you like? Whatever he likes. What, what's your favorite? What's your favorite? Oh, mine too. Uh -huh. What's your favorite? Uh, right. Mine too. Instead of truly understanding and finding out who are you, mm -hmm. right? True. So. so we know dating is the fun side. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's like a one-on-one -on -one interaction and courting involves family. Serious. So... Dating, you do at your own risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like Nisha said, you're you're trying to find out if you're compatible or if you are suitable for one another. I think the problem that they're having <coughs> with the young lady is that, like Nisha said, you should be serial dating as mm -hmm. a woman. Yes. You should not be serial sleeping around. No. So if she's serial sleeping, sleeping around, yes, then yes, there's yes. a problem okay. there. Right. But see, we get caught up in, like you said, we meet one person and we throw all our eggs in that in basket. In that one basket. Ooh, that's not even our man yet. Right. We don't even know if we like this man yet. Mm -hmm. And we cut off everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like Nisha said, it shows you who you are, but also... Your weaknesses, what mm -hmm. you're going to be vulnerable to. Are you going to like the smooth talker? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you going to like the man that smell good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you going to like the man that's flashy with his clothes exactly. and everything he owns is on his back and what he's driving? Mm -hmm. Are you going to like the nerd? Are you going to like the intelligent man? You know, all of those come into play and what you're going to fall victim to. Mm hmm so, like they say, it's levels to this thing. At, oh, absolutely. definitely. It's levels to definitely. this So, that's what I'm saying absolutely. at my 53 years of age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm understanding that now because right. I I was in that point of, like like Nisha just described, I meet somebody, I just, I just, 
it's all I'm in. And that you one know? person. And that one person. They didn't show me one or two things that just got my attention and I'm in. One or two things that you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That yeah. I liked or whatever. And yeah. So now I'm understanding that there's levels. Mm -hmm. So I can have me a squad. Yes. initially and then I can just drop them off as uh yeah. you know right yeah. like plucking the flower yeah. whichever petals left yeah. but at the same time <laughs> you you have to understand because this is something that I had to learn too that one no one's perfect right True. we all have our flaws and you have to decide if you can deal with that person's flaws if those flaws aren't going to be like a distraction mm -hmm. or be you know set you up for failure right, right. but Two, at the same time, you like you said, you got to be able to understand, how do I deal with, how does he deal with conflict? Right, exactly. How does he deal with the disagreement? Yes. How does this person deal with the disagreement? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do they deal with me, you know, knowing that I may have, my, my time management skills may be an issue. Because mm -hmm. some people have, to, you know, they're, they're a stickler for time. How do they deal with that? And is it, if it's a problem for you, I'm not the one for you. And that's okay. Exactly. It's exactly. okay. Right? Yeah. So, you, you got to you got to be able that's I guess that's the reason why it's OK to serial date, mm -hmm. because, again, it lets you know what you can and can't handle. Mm -hmm. But if you just deal with just one person at a time, you still truly don't know what you like and, and don't like. That's true. Absolutely. I think um, a precautionary tale would be for women not to talk to a man every day. Mm -hmm. He's not your man yet. Right. You're getting to know him. Mm -hmm. Right. And we see that phone ring and see his Charles. Get excited. And we start smiling. And oh. We don't know Charles. Right. We don't know if we like Charles. But when you talk to a man every day, you get to assume that this is my man. And mm -hmm. he's not. That's mm -hmm. a delusion. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we as women, we need to slow down. Right. And we need to take our emotions and put it on the shelf. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I think we have to not let that loneliness make you settle. Definitely. Because I think that's what we tend to do is because you want somebody, you want to come home. I mean, like you're you, especially if you had gotten used to that, you coming home to somebody every day and now you don't have that. So you feel like, okay, so-and-so he's showing me all this attention. He must like me. Da, da, da. I'm in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you haven't, you haven't went through that courtship like right. we talk about. Right. And so I think it's real important to have that that point and then when you do see the red flag don't minimize it don't make light of it it's a red flag for a reason yep and be okay to go on the to, from from roger to jeff because he didn't already this dude here he already showed, showed his you hand. yep exactly what he working with see instead what we do is we try to act like oh well that's not that bad mm -hmm. well that's not that bad mm -hmm. you know at this age or at any age really we shouldn't settle we should not settle get what you want and if you see it's a situation that is not cool be able to walk away. So I have a question for you. So if dating is fun mm -hmm. and dating is not your man, mm -hmm. why do we want to get into a man's pockets real early? Why do we insist that he take us to Roof Chris or a mm. Larry's where a steak might be $50, $100? Why Jeez. are we doing that? Adrian. I, Look, okay. I'm gonna say, you know, okay, well, the Look, thing Liz. is. <laughs> what happened was. Yeah. And I think in the begin in the dating part, now you you correct me if I'm wrong, but I would think it would be okay if he done something really nice, then the next, I got you the next date. Or, you know what I'm saying? What nope. we can do, No? <laughs> Not a good idea? No. Nope. Okay, so. What, you, what, what, is, what is a man dating? A man dating you, what does that mean? That means you are just getting to know one another. Okay, and, it and also vice versa. Means, he's trying to get to know you as well. It also means he is auditioning for the to part. let you know yeah. <laughs> what your life could be like with him. Yeah. But also, what women forgot is you're auditioning. You're auditioning too. too. Exactly. Yep. To yeah. see if you can fit in that spot. Yep. Right. So, my thing is this Is the ambiance great? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is the entertainment great? Yes. yes. But a day to me would be where we can sit, no music, just no noise, mm -hmm. and just chop it up back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. And get that vibe, mm -hmm. not the pressure of not paying the pressure. a bill mm -hmm. or if you got yeah. Because you know, men have to audition so many times. That's they get frustrated. That's, that's a lot of money. money. That's a it lot of is. money. A lot of rejection yep. and a lot of money. So we should try not to get in their pockets at first. A nice little walk, a nice little hike. Yep. Look at Adrian. <laughs> I've done it. I've done it. I've, I've done the hike dates, which I love. I like that. 
I've, I've done the coffee dates, which I love that too, because again, you're, it's, it doesn't cost much. You can have a conversation. You can see if the chemistry is, you know, is, mm-hmm. if there's potential for chemistry and you're not going broke while doing it. I really don't think when you're just dating someone, I don't think you need to go broke just to figure out if you guys are fit or mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, at least from what I understand when I speak with men, their biggest complaint is she knew she wasn't interested in me. She knew mm-hmm. she didn't like right. me, but she had me spend this $150 or $200 Ooh. meal on her knowing yes. that she wasn't interested right. in me. Right. And so I, I don't think you should do that while trying to get to know someone. Yeah. Keep you, it light. Keep mm-hmm. it light. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Be, because we know sisters that... They don't have enough groceries this weekend, so they'll let the one that they really don't like take yep. them out on take them on a date. Yep. On a date yeah. and feed them. Yep. Get them some yeah, drinks. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then be like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and then they're about to run. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. With a little I'm church, church, church fuck. Like, you break it. <laughs> thank you so much. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. You. You're so sweet. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, mm-hmm. I think that we should, you know, really have some kind of empathy because, you know, depending on how much a man spends then you have that pressure of uh look half a okay you <laughs> I got spent two hundred dollars mm, on you you gonna give what me you give me what you, what you giving me <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want the church hug okay. <laughs> <laughs> right and I, I think also that it would be to your advantage not to spend his money in the beginning because that'll let him know that you're really interested in him true yes and if he's trying to do something if he's trying to build something or whatever that you're gonna be down for him you know as he's trying to do that you're not always gonna have your hand out all the time gotcha. so mm-hmm. yeah we have to be more empathetic for them having to go out get rejected spend their money mm-hmm. she says it's not working out he said I'm gonna kill you you can try <laughs> oh, to call no. me right, <laughs> right. <laughs> go red oh, no. not killed <laughs> this <laughs> nigga is crazy <laughs> <laughs> I just let him take me to Vegas five times right. and I didn't we just, went to, we just went to Jamaica that's all <laughs> okay I don't know if you remember this but we was on a, uh, another broadcast together and this lady called in she was 55 years old mm-hmm. she met this guy he was whining and dining her. Also, um, me and our age grew up kind of in the drug era time where they pay for all your girls. Yes. So he was doing that too. And he took her to Vegas and she was pissed off because he only brought one bag, but it was just for the weekend. And you know, we packed for months. Mm-hmm. Men pack we very it. light. Mm-hmm. So what actually happened that night was he took her to, I think Caesars, gave her $300. He wanted to go gamble somewhere else. And she's sitting at the slot machine and she sees her old boyfriend. Mm. And she ended up in the room with her old boyfriend. Oh. And she did not sleep with the guy that brought her there. Oh, and, see. And so the next week, he was trying to date her, and she was sick, and he brought her chicken soup and NyQuil, and she wanted to break up with him. So she called in to the, to the um, show and asked us what did she think we should do. I said you should break up with him over the phone. Mm. Immediately, mm-hmm. because you knew you did not want oh to be goodness. with that man. Mm-hmm. You let him wine and dine you at four star places, and you didn't give up nothing. And he might just snap. Yep. Stop playing with people. Yep. So earlier when you talked about maturity, some people are still mm-hmm. not mature. That's true. There are young children more that. mature than old folks, mm-hmm. and true. vice versa. Exactly. Very true. Yes. yes. Very true. But just to get a good understanding of what you're trying to do with the individual, yeah. and we have to learn how to get to know each other, yes. not just on the surface level, because. Once I see that you're physically attracted to me, well, let's say visually. Mm -hmm. I'm visually attracted to you. You're visually attracted to me. Mm -hmm. We think the physical is going to be off the chain. And we think everything else is going to fall into place. And it doesn't. And it doesn't. Right, right. That is correct. And we're so surface. And we have to take time to get to know somebody. Talk to them. Hang around them. Bring them lunch to see if he got a job. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and all the little things you need to do. Be around his family. See who his homeboys are. See what his his goals are. His plans for himself. See if that matches with you before you have sex. Yes. Because sex and raw sex... Ooh. Just tears up. It, 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 it defies up your yep. vagina it and is. your life. Yes. Yes. It changes everything. And like you said, that's one thing you don't play with. Right. It, uh-uh. it no. changes everything. So, everything. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, oh my goodness, freaking kind of close, ladies. Final thoughts. Ooh. Oh my. <laughs> Go ahead, I, I actually I love this conversation and I learned a lot. So I appreciate uh, the candid 
conversation. It was very helpful. Um, I think in closing, I think just like what you said, I think um, dating as I'm out here in this dating scene again, is real important to um, be mindful of wh- who are you with, who you are dealing with, get some background on them. Like you said, the dating part is the fun part. The courting part is the part that um, it gets really sticky and you have to really pay close attention. So yeah, ladies, be careful out there. Uh, for me, I would say, based on all this, Know the difference between dating and courting Mm -hmm. and understand that when you're dating, you should be dating multiple people to get to know different people until you find that fit with someone. And when you guys decide as a as a unit to become exclusive, then you can eliminate the other potentials, you know, out there. However, don't use them. If you know that that person is not a potential for you, don't use him for his money. Like, yes. don't do not do that because that ruins it for other women who may come into his life because yeah. now he's thinking everybody's a gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's my final thought. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to piggyback off of you and agree with you. <laughs> if you want to date, you know you're dating at your, it's at your own risk. So if it's supposed to be light and fun, don't get mad when the dating is over. Mm -hmm. If you want to court, you know, you have to be very calculating on how you interact with men, you know, to to become a wife. There's a whole different thing from being a girlfriend to being being a wife. Like Mm -hmm. Adrian said, there's levels to this. And for parents, I think that it's imperative that we talk to our children about growing up and dating and hugging and kissing and exchanging fluids and <laughs> all yes. those things we, we have to tell our children because we seem to uh, kick our children out into a world that we have not even pre- been prepared for. So to be very cognizant of letting them um, have the knowledge that they need to be successful in life and... That about wraps it up, ladies. All right. Good job. So, ladies, until the next episode. BGP. 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 Keep your panties clean. And to the brothers, if you don't want to be on child support, if you don't want your license (laughs) revoked, if you don't want your wages garnished, Wrap it up. <laughs> oh, exactly. Put some plastic on your penis. Okay. <laughs> BGP and we out. All right. <laughs>